Hello everyone and welcome to another unit review and today we're going to be talking about Golbez. So let's get right into it, shall we? First of all, thing I got to note about Golbez, he is a very cool looking unit. Always really liked, you know, him. And some people have complained about his animation and, and sprite, but honestly, take a closer look because yes, they are somewhat similar. They kept the same version of him. He's not the After Years. This isn't an After Years banner, so no no reason should this be an After Years unit. Long story short, uh, I actually really like it, and I appreciate these small little differences that are now here. Either way, that's not really what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how good this unit is. So first of all, Trust Mastery. Let's get right into it. 40% magic, 20% esper stats. Really think that this is a great material to get your hands on for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is, you know, essentially very, 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 very strong in the future. Right now, I don't think it is necessarily the strongest material you can get from ages. As espers continue to grow, though, this could have long-term value. 20% esper stats is potentially really strong in the future. So, you know, for now, let's put a pin in it. Next up is his Super TMR. Super TMR is a heavy armor, 100 magic, 45 defense, 50% dark resistance. Gotta say, the 100% magic is the highest magic stat we've seen on any piece of clothing in the entire game, and it is very, very powerful. It is also incredibly limiting this item, because who can equip it? Golbez. Maybe X Death in the future. Veritas of Light, some hybrids, but not many units. Long story short, this is a very, very powerful piece of equipment, but is it necessary for wasting a slot trying to equip heavy armor so you can get it on a unit? Probably not. Still, very strong, would happy to get my hands on this eventually, because Golbez is kind of interesting. Now, limit burst wise, maxed out, it's 1350%. Ignoring 50% spirit, magic, attack. Now, this is dark damage as well, so it has an element on it that can be both good and bad. We've covered this many, many times before. But for three turns to all enemies, they receive a reduction of 100% dark resistance for three turns. And there is a typhoon coming outside. That's why I keep looking out the window. Yep. Typhoon. Anyway, let's finish this before the Typhoon kills me. Now, it also gives five Esper Crystals, too. Super nice. Does a whole bunch of different things. That Dark Resistance down and incredibly, you know, a pretty darn strong AoE attack means that this is a good purpose thing. And let's talk about Golbez. What is the strength of Golbez, both stat-wise and in his kit? And where are the weaknesses? First of all, he's got a pretty nice stat line for HP as well as defense. His defense is higher than most mages out there. That means that he's a little bit tougher to kill than a lot of other mages. That's pretty nice. I really like that. Magic stat wise, he's two points lower than both Ellie and Ultima, the strongest mages in the game right now. So stat wise, he'll never be able to beat either of them in terms of raw magical power. Also, Golbez isn't necessarily a strict damage unit, and I'll talk about that in a minute, what I mean by that. But Ellie and Ultima both have stacking magical attacks, and Golbez does not have that. Golbez instead says, well, instead of stacking magic, I'm going to get Jet-style chaining, or CG Hayu-style chaining. And we both know that those type of chainings can, have been very strong in the past and will probably be continuing strong in the future. Kit-wise, though, the weakest part is probably his hat equipment. Now, he can only equip a helmet, and that means that he loses out on a ton of magical equipment. Way too much magical equipment, as a matter of fact. Helmets just don't have a good magic option yet, and I don't know when we will get one. So, that is probably one of the things I like the least about his kit. How big is it? Uh, eh, eh, it's it's something to consider. Magic spell wise, you know, he has a fire, ice, and thunder. He has uh, meteor, of course, 
and as well, you know, he's just a big meteor guy. He has flare, and he also has impact. Impact is nice because it is an AOE, you know, debuff skill. So this is kind of getting into what is the big thing about Golbez, is this version of Golbez is more about support, strangely enough, than just, um, gotta keep checking and see if I'm gonna die soon. Golbez is of not just damage dealing, he also has a really good support kit, and I'll tell you about that, but doing, being able to double cast means that he can double cast any of these spells, but he can impact as well as do something else, so he doesn't have to give up a turn by just AoE debuffing, and that's really cool, as a matter of fact. Alright, in his kit, first of all, he has a 60% Esper boost. This is good because some of his attacks are hybrid based like CG Citra. They are based on his magic, his spirit, and his percent Evo magic. So not only are his summons stronger, but you know, he can do a few other things too, which is kind of cool. He is kind of a summoner, so it's cool that they gave him that in his kit. Now, what else? He has, just in his six star, he has a lot of passives to increase his spell, increase his stats, from defense and HP to magic to all of that good stuff. So what are the cool things? What are the really things that are also worth knowing? Well, he does have a counter that for both physical and magical that gives him some extra resistance to fire, ice, and lightning for a couple of turns at 50%, which makes him more survivable. Also, it fills the Esper gauge by one. So those are pretty nice little counters. They can only be used once per turn, but still pretty nice. Uh, moving on, he has some abilities that can AoE debuff the enemy for Spirit of 60% for three turns to all enemies. Uh, so that's what AoE means. He can also increase the team's magic by 110% for three turns to all enemies. Again, nice ability just for debuffing the enemy and buffing himself. It's an offensive ability, but it's still pretty strong for this guy just to have in his kit. He has a dark magic ability that can debuff dark resistance by 60% for three turns. It's only a 450% attack, but that's kind of nice just to have on command. It's single target too, by the way. But a big part of his kit are Esper attacks. Just like Yuna or CG Citra or Kid Rydia, he has his own Esper attacks. First one's an ice one that only uses one crystal. Crystal, that is very cheap. It is ice damage, it is 900% magic spirit, Evo Magic, Hybrid Attack, also AoE, and 60% chance to paralyze the enemy. Great for Arena, cheap to charge, super handy. Love it. Next up is a his other one. Now, normally this is a 1000% attack of dark damage to one enemy that reduces the dark resistance to that enemy by 75% for three turns. Doesn't sound that great, does it? But, you use another ability, which is, I will just show you really quickly, this one. This one is 45 MP, it increases his magic and spirit by 120% for 5 turns to the caster, it gives him a 300% modifier for 5 turns for multiple of his abilities, and gives him some Esper Gauge, which is great, because going back to that Dark Esper attack, if you use that ability before, it now becomes a 4 cost Esper Crystal, 3 hits, Five frames, um, magic attack that does dark damage at 1600%, same kind of calculation to all enemies, and debuffs dark resistance to all enemies for three turns of 100%. Very, 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 very strong debuff and a very strong attack, and it can be multicasted in a turn. So, yeah, that's just very powerful, and if you use the other ability, that's just strong too. Alright, moving on. Next up, you know, more passives, you know, 5% MP per turn. Now we get into his chaining abilities, as well as, well, just in general, the abilities that he gets that are based on the four fiends. An earth one that has a 30% chance to cause a whole bunch of status effects, and it's a one hit, 550% earth magic. Good for arena. Those status effects are good for arena a lot of times. Uh, the water one is a 12 hit at 12 frames, 
basically CG Hayu, you know, little hits, then one big final hit. Also, it's a 60% chance to paralyze the enemy. This ability is annoying in Arena. It's basically AoE Golem Staff, naturally, and, Gol and Golbez has a pretty good chance of just casting it in Arena, so look out for that one. Uh, his wind ability, this one is really cool. It's eight hits at 10 frames. No idea who it chains with yet, but again, the same style chaining as the water one and reduces damage taken by the, to the party by 15% for three turns. Damage reduction on a chaining ability? Oof, that's strong. We're gonna have words about that later. Uh, and his last one, the fire one, is 10 hits. This chains with Rubicon. It is AoE. Same style of chaining as before, and a 2000 HP and 20 MP heal to all allies. So if you have two 7 star Golbezes they, that are double casting this each, that's 8000 HP and 80 MP per turn. Almost don't need a healer at that much healing. And you're still chaining, it's really cool. All of this is only in his 6-star kit, too. He has also some extra MP, some limit burst, fill rate, some extra magic, blah, 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 blah. Sleep, silence, paralyzed, resistance, and some natural resistance to fire, water, wind, and earth. Also one of my favorite bands. That joke almost works. Of 20%. Now we get into his 7-star kit. And, oh, last thing in his 6-star, he can double cast any of his Golbez abilities. Cool! Seven star for equipping his own TMR, magic and HP by 30%, either bonus to true dual wield of 60% or true dual hand magic of 50%, 100% modifier for one of his abilities, and an extra 5% MP per turn, which is great because he can spend MP pretty damn fast. Now all of that is really cool, but what about his cool, well, no, let's not talk about his cooldowns yet. I want to talk about a specific ability, which is this one. This is one of, again, that, you know, multi-hit, weak hits, then a strong hit. 20 frames, 5 hits, first ones, all of the attacks ignore 50% spirit, and it's dark damage. So since he has so many dark debuffs, this is a pretty strong little chaining skill with another Golbez. 20 frames? I might chain with Ellie, okay. Gonna have to double check on that. Or someone can respond in the comments below saying, you know, doing my job. Love it when you guys do that, really. Makes it a little bit easier on me. Now, let's talk about his cooldown abilities. And first one is 120 MP. This one is available turn one, five turn cooldown. Reduces Light and Dark Resistance by 100% for 3 turns to all enemies. Increases his own Magic and Spirit by 150% for 3 turns. Gains Quadra Casting of any of his Golbez abilities. Gives a whole bunch of mod damage modifiers to a whole bunch of abilities for 3 turns. That's pretty damn strong too. And that even applies to his Summon attack. So he can, he can debuff the enemy, then use his Dark Esper ability to really bring the pain really bring the pain. His other cooldown ability, which is quite possibly my favorite ability in the entire game, 145 MP. It is War Meteor. 145 MP. What does it do? Well, you have to wait seven turns, and then you can use it on turn seven. 60 hit at six frames. Magic light damage. 1800% ignoring 50% spirit to all enemies. This ability is insane. I actually think that this could be the CG Hayu's limit burst of abilities. Especially because you can just, the turn before, use his debuffing ability for light of 100%. Then you hit chain two of these with two very strong Golbezes. That's potentially game-breaking. Possibly. That seems really strong. The enemy's light resistant, whatever. But... Other than that, if it also works with dual wielding too, that would be a really easy 120 hit. Uh, I, I Maybe the frames don't quite work, but let a guy dream. 20% magic, 40% magic, increase light resistance, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, Golbez has a very interesting kit that relies also on, you know, different types of chaining and being able to support the party while doing damage. If you can do two things really well at once, awesome. Just frickin' 
awesome. So let's show off his uh, the abilities based on the four fiends. That's what I meant to say. So as you can see, we got the MP heal and we got the damage reduction, which is pretty cool. All to get on turn one. Don't want to use that quite yet. Wanted to pick that. Next up is Earth and Water ability. Again, <coughs> excuse me. Pretty strong hard hitting attack considering that nobody was chaining with him. All right, so now for the next turn, let's use this ability, because this ability is going to give Golbez just a little bit of strength and debuff our enemy for a considerable amount. And even though he can't triple cast, the flexibility in the things that Golbez can do very quickly is probably one of the things that makes him so strong to me. Oh, right, we have Quadra casting this turn. That's cool. Let's just, let's just go ham. All right, so he buffs himself. He gets ready for the next turn. And now we're just doing a whole bunch of damage. Not bad for a single character doing damage. Also, we've basically generated a full Esper Gage just with one unit. And now we can use his upgraded summon attack. Unfortunately, can't quadra cast, but that might be too strong for the game. Keep in mind, we have that 100% dark resistance too, so we are getting very powerful hits here. 37 million by himself, unchained, is pretty cool. As a matter of fact, since that is such a strong dark attack, being the chain with something like... Uh, Nagi, it might be very, very, very powerful. But there's one ability I haven't really shown yet. And this ability, we're going to have to go to our favorite unfair training ground, the Earth Shrine. And the music is still playing this time. Excellent. Our, Oh, actually, hold on. Well, there goes that one stamina. We're never getting that back ever again. Unless I can get... Ooh, let's do a 7-star Golbez with the 7-star Golbez. We're also kicking Rubicant out of the party because Rubicant, which I have not talked about yet, we'll talk about soon, has a counter ability that can potentially screw everything up. And by everything, I mean everything. Alright, well, now this this is going to be the world's most un, just unlucky rat. You got you're gonna feel really bad for him in about 60 turns. So Gomez can keep the party alive for a long time, which I think is really important when we're talking about the potential of using him in long-term fights. If you don't want to do a short-term fight, then this is probably the way to do it. Right. Make sure I hit the right buttons. Cool. We debuffed this guy to eternity. Speaking of eternity, let's just ruin his day. Did I pick the right one? I don't know. We did now. All right. So here is his big chaining ability. Pretty frickin' strong. Now, because it's not in the uh, training dummy area, it's a little difficult to tell exactly how much damage we are doing. So let's do it one more time while I give them a summary of Golbez. I think Golbez is very strong, but in a different way. Ellie and Ultima are both high potential uh, for... Oh, that's cool. Thanks, Golbez. Way to be a team player to yourself. Uh, I think Golbez is a generally very strong unit, but in a different way. Ellie and Ultima have stacking damage trying to finish the fight very quickly. 
Golbez has a large variety of abilities that can keep the not only himself, but the entire party alive. He can also make the do a good job bringing the party onto the offensive as well. And I... Whoops, well, we're killing one of them. And I think that is really, really important to think about is that it's not Ellie, he's a little bit different, but in his own way, he's very strong. War Meteor, if it gets double casted with um, Dual Wield, then Dual Wield is, in theory, the better chaining option, because that would just make Golbez insanely strong. So let's just go one more time. Casual 120 chain. Hit him for 600,000 per hit? So 600, let's... I didn't quite see that. Let me just bring up a calculator real quick. 600,000 times 120. Eh, 72 million. That's pr pretty strong. That's a pretty good chaining option. More if it does work with dual wheel, then you can essentially double that. More if you find a way to give him a bigger a bigger boost than what he already has. Or if that Golbez was just stronger. Golbez is a different type of damage dealer from some of the other ones we've seen already. Uh, currently, Ellie and Ultima. Ultima has a little more support in her kit. Ellie is straight damage. There's no two ways about it what Ellie is, essentially. Golbez is more of a long-term get deep into the fight than just pummel the shit out of the enemy for a lot of damage. Also, we've seen CG Hayu's chaining options are deceptively weak at the start, but are considerably stronger than most people give credit for. So on a mage, and since most enemies, again, most enemies' spirit stats are lower than their defense stat, it's a really good option. And I gotta say, generally, really, really like Golbez and his kit, because he is a slightly different type of mage, kind of a support, yet still can dish out damage. Also, he has a Shadow Dragon. That's pretty cool, too. So that's all for this one. Next time, we'll be taking a look at Rubicont. Who, while I'm less excited, we'll still give Rubicon a fair shake. Also, I'm probably just going to refer to Rubicon as the Fire Lord for a bit. Anyway, don't think too much about that. One other little piece of note. Tomorrow we will get a couple hours of maintenance. Or July 4th, I should say. We're going to get uh, some short maintenance on the game. Uh, one other thing that I was going to tell you about. Important. Ah, yes. There is one other thing about Golbez that we should note here before we cut. Golbez is the first of what Alum has said are the units that they will be redoing. What do I mean by redoing? Essentially, old, very old units in the game, probably like, you know, Kef Kefka or Shadow or Celeste or Shadow or Zidane or Shadow. All of these units have a really good chance of getting redone and just being redone better. So, that is very exciting because I'm hoping for a 5-star base Celeste, because Kefka is pretty much guaranteed. But, if Golbez turned out this good, I'm very excited to see what all of these re-released units will be. Because, you know what? Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 5? They all need a little more love than Final Fantasy 4 did, in total honesty. Alright. So that's all for now. I will see you in the next video.